In this video, we'll do a quick overview of the IN100 Evaluation Kit and look at what we get out of the box. If you're not familiar with the IN100, it's InPlay's breakthrough SoC and the first of the Nano Beacon family. It is set to redefine the Bluetooth beacon as we know it by providing a solution that's ultra low power, ultra low cost, and best of all, programming free. Nano Beacon chipsets are built from the ground up to allow customization of the application with no programming required by use of a desktop application called the Nano Beacon Config Tool, which we'll get into later in this video. So now let's take a look at the packaging of the evaluation kit and what you get. So here, as you can see, this is the package that it comes in. Um, it contains three development boards as well as one programmer board. So this is the programmer board, which is used to program the development board. It also serves as the interface between the Nano Beacon config tool, which is the desktop application for configuring and customizing your application and the development board. So let's take a look at the development board specifically and look at the different components. So as you can see here in the figure, this is what it looks like up close. The first one that we're going to look at is P1. This is the chip enable line. This configures whether the chip enable line to the IN100 chipset is either pull up or pull down. Then we have the J3 and J4 on both sides. These are the IO connectors. It provides access to the IO and power pins of the chipset. Then you have the actual chipset down here, the IN100. As you can see, it's pretty small. This is the QFN packaging, which measures about three, three millimeters by three millimeters square. The K1, which is the chip preset. This provides access to the chip preset line. And then you have a J8, which is uh, used for current measurement. This provides leads for current measurement operation. If you're not doing any kind of current measurement, then you just keep the jumper on. Otherwise you can take it off and get access to the leads to perform current measurements on your chipset and on your board. Then we have J9, which is the RF output. This is the SMA connector for connecting an external antenna. Finally, we have the J5, which controls the external power. So this is a way to power the device or the development board instead of having a battery using an external source. And it provides and accepts a wide operating voltage range all the way from 1.1 volts all the way up to 3.6 volts. Next up, we'll look at the programmer board. As you can see here in the figure, this is the programmer board up close. We have SW1, which is a switch, and this provides three options to control the power supplied to the development board that's connected to this programmer. It gives you the options of 1.8 volts, as well as 3.3 volts or off. If you turn it off, then you have to supply your own power directly to the development board. You have J10, which is the UART interface for connecting the programmer to the PC. You have S1, which is a switch that controls OTP, uh, one-time programming. And this was added as a measure to prevent burning the application to the OTP by mistake. You have J6 and J7. These are used to control the UART connection between the IN100 and the PC. And then finally, you have the 10-pin mail connector for connecting to the development board. In order to work with the IN100 evaluation kit, you need a few things. First of all, in terms of hardware, you need the Nano Beacon development kit itself, which includes the programmer and the three tags. You need a 3.5 millimeter male SMA RF antenna. You need a USB-A to micro USB cable for connecting the programmer to the computer. You need a Windows PC for running the Nano Beacon config software tool. And you need a device capable of scanning for Bluetooth packets. This could be a mobile phone, a tablet, or even a desktop computer with its internal BLE chipset or a Bluetooth dongle for scanning for Bluetooth packets. Optionally, you can use a CR1220 battery for powering the tag. In terms of software, you need the Nano Beacon config tool software that runs on Windows PCs. And this is available for free at inplay-tech.com. And finally, you need a Bluetooth scanning app. Several of them are available on the Google Play Store or in the Apple App Store, and those are used for scanning the tag once it starts transmitting. So to make working with the Nano Beacon IN100 as simple as possible, we've designed it from the ground up to be programming free. Yep, no more firmware development. 
And that's providing three benefits. It's easier product development, it's faster, and it's lower cost. The current tool that we use for creating and customizing your application and programming it to the tag itself is called NanoBeacon Config Tool, and this is what you see here in front of you on the screen. This tool currently requires a 64-bit Windows machine, but in the future will support other operating systems such as Mac OS. Here's a glimpse into what the tool looks like, and we'll go over the tool and its many features in a future video, but today we're focusing on just the evaluation kit itself. So to configure your development board using the NanoBeacon Config Tool, you first connect the programmer board to the development board, as we mentioned, and then connect the programmer board to the PC via micro USB cable. As a first step, let's make sure the following settings are present on the board. The programmer board, we make sure that jumpers J6 and J7 are present and are connected. The power switch is set to 3.3 volts, and let's set the OTP switch to on. For the development board, we make sure that the jumper on the chip enable pins are connected for pins one and two, not three, and that the current measurement jumper is present and that nothing is connected to J5, the external power supply to the development board. So once we have the programmer and the development boards connected to each other and the programmer connected to the computer, we can probe for devices connected to our computer. Before we go into and probe within the NanoBeacon config tool, it's a good idea to go to your device manager and just make sure that your device is connected and that it shows up here with no errors. Once you do that, you can go ahead and hit the probe button and it should enumerate the devices that are connected. In this case, I only have one, so that's on COM3. The baud rate is by default set to 115-200, and you just simply hit connect. If it successfully connects, then you'll get this message telling you so. You can hit OK, and then from there on, you can go around and change the different application settings, and then run in RAM when you're doing testing, and then finally you burn and program the chipset when you're done with making sure that the settings are all correct and you want to just burn the fuse, the OTP, on the chipset and then use it in the field. So that's it for covering just a brief overview of the tool. We will go into a lot more detail in future videos, but for now this was what we wanted to cover as far as the evaluation kit. So thank you for watching.